Hi Banshee. Um, I liked your video. Uh, didn't agree with everything you said in it, obviously, but whoever agrees with everything. Uh, thanks for actually showing the respect to go back and look at my past work. Um, and if you launch rants like this often, I may have to look into your radio show a bit more often. And it's Desborough. Desborough. Like Borough Council or the Borough of. Yeah. Okay. I'm still confused as to why you're calling me a shit stain uh, when it appears that you substantially agree with me. Uh, I mean, the whole bit after you call me a shit stain basically says exactly what I already said. Um, so, colour me confused. Um, rape is awful. I never said otherwise. It, it's a terrible thing. There, there's all sorts of terrible things that happen to people, and that doesn't mean that they're bad plot devices or, or elements. Um, I centered on rape because that's what people are making the particular fuss about at the time. But you know, you 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 can go back through time and you can see similar moral panics about EC horror comics or D and D being satanic or more recently, you know, Jack Thompson and his Grand Theft Auto is a murder simulator type thing. And um, to me, these are all the same character of argument, and they. If all these others don't hold water, it, you know, if, if Elvis swinging his hips didn't, you know, lead to moral degeneracy, then how can we now say that depictions of of rape are somehow making things worse? I, I don't think they are, and I think the, the mere fact that they have such an influence, such an effect, such an energizing and emotional, you know, tearing effect, proves that they're not being, it's not being trivial, trivialized or made normal. Um, yeah, the opposite. It wouldn't have that effect otherwise. What does concern me is people prejudging and jumping to conclusions, and you know, getting the torch and, and pitchfork, and you know, heading out after a company or an individual just because of the mention of the word, whether it be rape or, or any other topic, really. Um, taking the Lara Croft situation, for example, since you reference it, uh, she gets her ass fondled and then kicks the guy's ass. The rape thing seems to have been an overstatement, but people have reacted presumptively. They think just because you know rape was mentioned, it must definitely for reals be in there, which has now been refuted by the company, uh, and that it must necessarily be done poorly, which isn't necessarily true either. And whether something's done well or poorly is, as I've mentioned before, very much down to subjective judgment. You know, the game's not out yet, so how do we know? We don't. It might be done incredibly well, very sensitively, if it's even brought up at all. Um, Knee-jerking to rape is no different to me than knee-jerking to any other element. Just because your game or book or film includes rape doesn't mean that it's, you know, it's a bad game or a bad book or a bad film or that the, the subject is going to be tackled in a, in a bad way. Um, okay, so moving away from the example of Lara Croft, let's take a, you know, a diametrically different um, example. Heavy Rain. I don't know if you've played it or not, but kick-ass game if you haven't. Um, the flashback dream assault on the character Madison Page in that is hugely effective. Um, the, you, know, you, you get the sense of threat and um, desperation, and it really comes across, and I think it's done well. And this is all flashback to her past trauma, and it does help you understand the character and where she's coming from and what she's doing. Um, someone else on Twitter brought up the rape aftermath mission at Fort McCann in um, one of the Fallout games. I, th I think I've remembered it right. Um, I have played that, but I didn't think it was as well done. But people differ. Um, this is why I tried so hard to avoid the subjective argument of what makes something well done or not. There's, there's just way too much baggage in that argument for you to get anywhere because people's tastes and aesthetics all differ and then you've got to take into account context and homage and humour and satire and it just gets into a huge mess because what one person likes and another doesn't and you, you get nowhere. Um, I mean you, you can slam something for being crap but I don't think you should slam something just for including an element that you don't like. You just don't like it. F fair enough. Um, I mean Take, take another example. Um, a comedian guy over here called Chris Morris did a show back in the early 2000s uh, called Brass Eye, which was a satire on news shows and sort of 24-hour news, kind of presaging the whole the whole Fox News thing in a lot of ways. And he did a, a really great episode of that called Peter Geddon, 
which was making fun of the whole hysterical media reaction to paedophiles. I mean, it got so bad in this country that paediatricians were being, you know, mobbed and attacked at their homes because people couldn't tell the difference between, you know, paedophile and, uh, and paediatrician. It, it, it was it was ludicrous. And that his work was a masterful piece of satire, in my opinion, on mob culture um, and the demonization of paedophiles. But there was a huge shitstorm about it. Lots of people didn't get it. Lots of people thought it was... Yeah, trivialising the issue, whatever. I thought it was an important counterpoint to what was going on. Um, I think you can find it on YouTube if you want to watch that. And Chris Morris's other stuff, especially Blue Jam, is also excellent. Um, hopefully, I hope I'm getting kind of the sense from from what you've said in your video. Hopefully, neither you or I would agree that any particular topic should necessarily be taboo and completely off limits forever and ever. Amen. Um, so rape, you know, is still on the table as a, as a plot element for things. It's just it's down to personal opinion whether it's done well or not. Um, you talk about how plot points should be relatable to everyone, and I think I have to disagree with you there. Um, a dispossessed monarch, for example, is not a position I'm ever likely going to be, under, to be able to understand, but I can still empathise with it. Um, and, you know, I can read Lord Valentine's Castle, and I can get into the character, even though he's in a position that's completely unrelatable to me because I have empathy. Um, I don't have psychic powers, but I can relate to the protagonist of dying inside. Um, yeah, or, or Flowers for Algernon, whereas intelligence is, is slowly seeping away, which is kind of like how you imagine Alzheimer's or something with me. That's not something I've experienced, but I can empathise with it and I can get into the story and the character. Um, not to mention that men do get raped uh, in media as well as in real life. It's treated more than a joke of course, most of the time, and dudes don't make a huge fuss about it because we're dudes and we're not supposed to. Um, but just about any cop drama you care to mention makes some kind of joke about prison rape, um, more often than not. And I think the loss of agency and the violation of autonomy and of choice, um, choice theft, as as it's called in um, uh, first of the new Crobers and Books, um, I think it's something we can relate to whether we're male or female. Um, you know, there, there's a couple of pointed examples in media which people remember, but there are more. But what about deliverance or, or scum? Um, you know, the, the male rape side is in there. It's just I think people are less sensitive to it, notice it less. There's less confirmation bias towards that. Uh, you mentioned trashy romance. Uh, what about bodice rippers? Uh, <laughs> what about the women with rape fantasies? You did mention fetish and, and uh, points for that. Um, People have strange kinks. It doesn't necessarily make them a bad person. Um, and, you know, liking a rape fantasy doesn't mean a woman wants to be raped. And if a man likes a rape fantasy, it doesn't mean he wants to rape. Because, well, as you point out, it's not so much about sex in real life. Um, I think there's a big divide between the kind of abuse that the female games writer you mentioned for Bioware, I, I, I forget her name, um, I think there's a difference in the kind of abuse that she gets and the kind that, say, I've been getting. Um, trolls troll with whatever trolls. Um, I honestly don't think most of them believe what they're saying. They're just, someone's made themselves a target. You know, if you, if you make a blog post or a, or a YouTube video or whatever on feminism or sexism in gaming, then you, make, you put up a huge red flag. These are my buttons. Come and push them. And then the trolls sweep in and, yeah, there you are. Um... And I think as long as we don't recognise that fact, we're not going to solve the issue. Whereas um, people who are objecting to you know the mere use of the word rape when we come down to it, or the mere suggestion that it might be in a game, and launch their arguments, they seem to genuinely believe the things that they're saying. And some of them are quite hateful and horrible. You know, I've been called a potential rapist. Um, but, you know, they've said, "Oh, let us know if it's you know if it's not enough for you anymore, and we'll call the police." Yeah, and that's people actually believe this. That's far more hurtful than some troll just trolling to troll, really. Um, male and female sexualization is different because there's differences between the genders in display behaviors, psychology, socialization, everything. That's why those comic book cover gender swap poses look so ridiculous. Um, that's a whole different can of worms, though, which I'll have to come to later or, or another time. Um, you brought up Penny Arcade and the Dick Balls fiasco, which I thought was painfully ironic because I felt that that comic was about how 
these horrific things are trivialized in games and how they shouldn't be. You know, well, screw you, because I've finished my quest. So I thought it kind of made the point that they were being criticized about in a lot of ways. And they reacted to the criticism with ridicule because that's what you do with things that are ridiculous. Um, but people making these criticisms don't seem to want to prove their case. They don't want to back it up. They seem to think that just because you claim to be fighting for something worthy, that's enough. That you should automatically be believed. Um, so I, don't, I don't hold much stock in this concept of rape culture, uh, but I'm willing to be convinced, as I'm willing to be convinced on anything else. I just... I don't think when Julian Assange is being deported basically for cheating on his girlfriend and yet in another nation a Muslim girl is being, of 14 is being whipped to death because she was raped, I don't think we're the ones with the rape culture. And I don't think it's a matter of degree, I just don't think we have a rape culture. I think there are individuals who are asshats, but I don't think we have a rape culture. We all acknowledge rape is bad, you know, it's on the statute books, you can be arrested and jailed for it. <sighs> Any issues, I think, are down to are down to people, individual people. Um, but um, as I said, I'm willing to be convinced. If you've got some compelling evidence of, of this thing, then you know, bring it forth, and you'll change my mind. It's the same with anything. Um, I avoid Xbox, incidentally, because it's full of dicks, um, and I'm a guy. I just can't can't be bothered dealing with all that at all. I'd rather play it by myself. Thanks very much. Um, I think you and a lot of other people involved in this underestimate people's ability to separate reality and fantasy. I keep banging on about that, but I think many of us are capable of dividing the two. The ones that don't seem capable um, to me seem to be the ones crusading about it because they seem to think it has some kind of big, you know, normalising real effect, but when I can't really see any evidence for that. Um, culture's different too. You can't assume that every cultural subculture is going to adhere to the same social standards or to weigh things with the same amount that you do. In Britain, example, where I'm from, um, we swear a lot. <laughs> we swear a hell of a lot. And the word cunt doesn't have anything like the impact in this country that it does in the US. Not, not even remotely. It's, it's, you know, it's out of bounds in the US from as far as I can tell. But over here, not so much. Um, and then within subcultures, you're going to get differences, differences of meaning, differences of nuance. And when you encounter that from outside, maybe you're going to have some kind of weird reaction to it. Um, in your text reply to me, you talk about 16-year-old consent. That's the age of consent here, so that's no big deal to me. It goes down as far as 12 in mainland Europe and some places, I think. I think that's Holland. It sounds like Holland, but I'm not sure. Um, but they, anyway, that's no big deal to me. And then you talk about vehemence. Well, you know, I react with vehemence proportional to the vehemence that I see. Uh, I've seen people jump to conclusions and shit all over the new Lara Croft game. Not that I like Lara Croft games in the first place, but sight unseen, just because of the merest hint of a whiff of the word rape in association to it. Um, people just seem completely unwilling to analyze and process or to look at it. They just see the word rape and react without thinking. It might be done awfully. It might be done well. It might not be done at all, but why cut it completely out of our media, especially if it's as common as some people claim, in which case it's a relatable point and an issue that needs to be tackled. You know, punched, looked at, saying this is this is bad, this is wrong, and that's something that media can do as well. You know, we can take things the other way. Instead of these ideas of maybe normalising it, we can show that it's horrific. We can point that out. You know, um, we can examine the subject and the aftermath and the, all the fuss and why people don't report and things like that. And you can explore all of these important facets through fiction. And if we don't allow people to examine rape, then we're also throwing all that out. And I don't think that's a good thing either. Um, I am not going to apologise for defending free expression. Um, that's more important to me than just about anything else, is people's ability to explore these things. And I don't think anything should be off the books. Whether it's done well or not, that's open to criticism. But saying that these things should not be looked at, should not be talked about, that's not not for me, I'm afraid. Um, maybe that's a point where we where our viewpoints can never meet, but fair enough. Um, if you want to discuss any of these points in more detail or ask me what I think rather than assuming, uh, my door's always open since you seem like a reasonable chap, even though you did burn a piece of your clothing. Uh, about the most reasonable person I've seen in a while. And again, um, nice video, um, even though I don't agree with most of the later half.
Peace.